Hey guys, what's up? It's Wolf here, one and only, and I know some of you guys have been having trouble with the no healing on episode 3 of Blood Wolf. It was actually pretty annoying for me too. Uh, it took me a couple of tries. I kept going through the stages over and over after the video. I know some of you guys were actually looking into that video trying to figure out if I completed it. Normally on my first run, I don't really care. Then I continue on the strategies later on. Then next video, I pretty much just um, show off the strategies if I actually complete the stage. I actually managed to finish no healing, but I almost got no deaths on this, but an archer outsped me, which you'll see in the video later. Uh, this only took like 10 minutes. It was actually pretty simple. I'm just gonna go through what I've been doing in this. First, you guys may have noticed that I use one of the items that actually gives Quicken. This is one of the Fate Stay Night event items that you can get pretty easily. It's the um, little fish. You can only carry five of them, so use them wisely. I mostly recommend you bring a Cryomancer just because you're going to need Quicken. Quicken is just way better to use than um, Overclock unless you actually need it, which 9 out of 10 you won't. I brought in my Bard Plus just because I wanted to sleep some of the units. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Luckily, later on, it starts to put the uh, two Spearmen to sleep and they're asleep for quite a bit of the match, which is actually pretty nice. I know some of you guys had, had trouble with it and my video pretty much didn't help, but hopefully this one will. I put my Zen Getsu back, charge him because Anesthesia will walk up like two or three spots in front of him then that gets to does have that reach to where he can just finish her off now she's just gonna sit right there and my buddy who i prone in as a mercenary i can just go in and just take her out i do want to weaken her a little bit more just to make sure you know double check mostly just because you want to get anesthesia out there as fast as possible before she starts doing a lot more damage to you and your team starts killing people it's she's really strong and plus she does have dark saber she starts to drain jewels as well just to use it and yeah you just want to keep the most units away from her best as possible i pretty much was testing out and seeing how much defense she had to magic attacks she she has quite a bit i do want to let you all know that mostly all status effects are going to work against the like little normal units in the back not anesthesia. Anesthesia is pretty much immune to all status effects. So you can't, like, petrify, you can't paralyze, you can't do any of that. And here's my Zen Kids, he's taking her out. And now that she's off the map, I can feel free to have a little bit of a breather. Now I'm gonna put my snipers up here at a higher vantage point. Most of you guys know the higher snipers are, the more stronger they are, and the way more range they will have. So I recommend keeping them up here, up top, but sometimes you're going to have to bring them down just because a few of the units come down below them to where they can't like fight. But surprisingly well, Zangetsu can fend them off pretty good. So as you guys see at this point, I pretty much put the two spearmen to sleep. Now all I gotta do is worry about that pesky archer coming in closer. The second archer on the right doesn't move into like way, way further into the match, which is quite nice for me. Um, I do have like kind of a strategy going as you guys can see, it's actually pretty decent. All you wanna do is keep everybody quickened. If I had to recommend a good like AOE debuffer, it would probably be between Poland's uh, Bard Plus, where she can just put everybody to sleep on a map. It's pretty much the whole map, and it does damage. Or Caster Yomi, because she has a pretty, pretty wide debuff range for her days in bind. So I'm pretty much just checking out Grand Cross, seeing how far it's gonna reach, seeing how much it's gonna take out. Um, I wasn't actually going to use it here. I was just pretty much testing out Zangetsu's skills since I don't really use them very often. Mine is pretty much 78, going on 79 real soon. Um, I need to keep leveling him up. Then he's gonna be really good for these events because Zangetsu is amazing for like half of these events I've been doing. So with that said, <laughs> hey, 
Don't, don't underestimate him. He is pretty strong. So I put him over here just because I don't want the monk coming over and punching him with anything that he has. So, like I said, Zangetsu does have like a two space range. So I'm going to try and take advantage of that as much as I can. I'm pretty much moving around seeing where it would be the best place to just sit him. I'm not sure if it was going to one shot. So I just charged up and made sure. So, but Zangetsu could pretty much one shot anybody without the charge up. Well, the normal units at least, not anesthesia. So I'm ignoring the spearmen. I'm just mostly focusing on the monks. You guys will see him go under me and I have to readjust one of my snipers. This is where I couldn't hit him at all. So pretty much from this point on, I want to keep one back and keep one forward. Just because I want her to keep dealing damage to the ones in the back. And then that archer will move later on. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with Poland. I just kept her there, <laughs> to be honest. Just because she did run out of jewels. If anything, I should have gave Rahu the Christmas gear that gave jewels, just because that would have been extremely good for Poland. So yeah, there's another strat you guys can use for that, just in case she runs out of jewels. That will keep her like supplied, just because Rahu does have like a lot of jewels. But then again, if you want to constantly keep everybody quickened, I would recommend that you would just probably leave it off. Here I'm just trying to move my sniper, just making sure that I have a pretty decent range on one of the monks at least. Now this guy's going to go under me and then I'm going to have like some pretty interesting issues here. So I can't hit anybody right here, but then I figured out that I could just use Grand Cross and take out these two. Which was pretty nice. That's why I say Grand Cross is really good for this, just because those two like to line up if I leave them there. Now, I can pretty much finish this guy off because I have a combo attack going. I was going to let Rahu kill him, but she was taking too long to, you know, <laughs> kill him. That was Pollen's turn. I, I kind of made a mistake and moved her right there. Because this is where the archers start to spawn in and start to target her. I mean, I tried to keep holding alive, but, you know. Ah, it didn't work out as well as I thought it would. Then I wake this guy up, but this was pretty much the last turn of those spearmen being asleep anyway. So I tried to take out this guy, which was one of the people I needed to finish off. And unfortunately, I wasn't thinking about blocking the archer in and just keeping him from attacking. It was pretty much all the archer's turn and this guy got his turn and just finished her off. Which is unfortunate. So that pretty much killed my whole no death run. Which was just fine. I didn't, I didn't really care all that much as long as I got rid of no healing. Now I can just pretty much heal all I want just to finish the last stage. And then I can move on to the extra dungeons and try and figure out how to do those. I haven't even touched the extra dungeons yet. So we're going to learn it together to uh, next week because I don't want to deal without you guys because you guys need to experience my first run struggle like always <laughs> so pretty much from this point I have a strategy going I was going to quicken Yomi but I was going to start quicking her second because I forgot Zangetsu has another Grand Cross he can use just to finish off an enemy so yeah then I put Rahu back just because I want to get her ready to speed up Yomi next so next, I wanted to at least put in some more damage into this guy. I know he has slow on, but luckily I crit and finish him off, so I don't have to worry about him too much. So next, I just leave her there. I move Zangetsu down, getting him ready for any other enemy that decides to come within his range. Now I'm going to be using Yomi. I want her to stay at least pretty close to Rahu when she gets her next turn. I can't hit anybody with Karis, so I just leave her right here 
the archer starts to move now that everybody else is pretty much dead. And he's the only one. So, I have a little bit of a strategy already ready for him, just in case he did start moving. I try to hit the archer just to make sure I can, you know, kind of save myself the strategy. But no, he was on the back side of the roof, which pretty much blocks off me from hitting him. Which is actually, you know, pretty clever. He escaped me that time. But the spearman comes up in a range where we can start picking him off. So we don't really have to worry about it. So I put Yami over here. And what I'm going to do is pretty much keep him from moving or attacking. With days and, and bind. And now I can finish this guy off with Grand Cross. But look who's in the way. <laughs> so I had to wait it off. I was thinking to myself, does he have a jump? No, he doesn't. So I was kind of sad about that. I had to wait off a turn so I can move her out of the way. And now she's pretty much going to sit right there, actually. Thought to myself, I can actually do a pretty good amount of damage. And plus, Karis is coming up. I don't really have to worry about it all that much. I can start welding on this archer here. And Karis is up. I can pretty much... Well, I thought I could finish him off here. Then I started doing the penetration. Then I said, screw it. I'm just going to slow him. Then once he moves up once, I'm pretty sure Zangetsu can just take him out at this point. Ah, oh, never mind. <laughs> Bad call. But we do finish off the archer. I was thinking about coming over here and finishing off the spearman. But then I wasn't really sure how many turns I had left on this. So I was just like, you know, I'm just going to play it safe since the slow is fresh and new. And he pretty much can't reach anybody. That's one reason why I didn't put Zangetsu on the edge. And boom. That's the pretty much episode three. So yeah, now I'm going to go do my no death run, which was going to be pretty easy if I just follow this same strat. Everybody will have HP and can't be one-shotted. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope the video helped you guys out with a few strategies of your own. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out. Don't let anyone tell you what you should do I got a clear view We're gonna make it soon Just keep pushing through Yo, what you got to lose Yo, what you got to lose Yo, what you got to lose Just keep pushing through Cause what you got to lose